Hello from uh, the forest of Southern Oregon on Sunday, April the 26th, being it's Sunday, and I'm parked uh, kind of near a road. There's definitely going to be some background noise, but hey, that's the way it is. So, just trying to put up some content. Uh, some people may be thinking, uh, what the hell does he do out there? Just watch the trees grow? And, um, well, yeah, kind of. That is the backdrop, because I am in the forest. As you can see, I um, thought I'd take a few minutes here, um, since uh, most everything else has been done. I think that's the way it is for most people. You've done all your projects, everything is done, so now what do you do? I mean, I've gotten calls from people that I haven't heard from in ages. Basically, because of that, they said, well, <clears throat> who can I talk to <laughs> while I'm self-quarantining or uh, physical distancing? So, but it's, uh, it is nice to hear from people, for sure. Anyway, uh, since I'm full-time uh, RVing, I end up in situations like this a lot. Uh, when I'm transiting, I'm, you know, going through rest stops and any place that <clears throat> seems like, uh, you know, I can do an overnight easily. So, <clears throat> the way that it works for me is, uh, and probably because of my hiking uh, experience. I tend to go to bed early, get up early, so in the morning I'll usually wake up around 4 or 5 and uh, get up <clears throat> if it's cold out, get up and turn the furnace on, go back to bed for a little bit, let everything warm up. Hey, I don't like to be cold either. So, uh, Get up, you know, make some uh, mocha, have a little something to eat, and uh, kind of watch the dawn creep in out my back window. And uh, at that point, I uh, usually will have a superfood drink to get things going. And um, depending on how I feel, and lately I have been feeling it, that being the need to keep my legs uh, in shape for uh, hiking, I will uh, climb onto my uh, road bike on the indoor trainer and um, pedal for an hour. And um, I'm just pretty much looking at my heart rate. I do have a power meter, but I don't know, on the trainer, uh, it's, it's kind of iffy. Anyway, my heartbeat, uh, heart rate kind of tells me where I want to be over that hour. So uh, once that finishes up, I'm usually feeling pretty good. You know, the blood's been flowing, things are working. <clears throat> you know, maybe uh, have a little bit more to eat, check out what's going on in the world. Uh, I do like to stay in touch, if for no other reason just to keep uh, grounded in a reality check on where this pandemic is going. And um, I do follow a few Facebook groups on hiking because I uh, do intend to continue hiking uh, in a little bit. So um, like I mentioned in the prior video, uh, that will come up on the uh, my other channel um, if and when that um, trigger is pulled. <clears throat> so uh, that uh, in, in that context, of course, the way that it works for me is I store my rig, jump on a Greyhound bus or sometimes Amtrak if it's uh, cost effective. It's definitely a much nicer ride. And, uh, you know, I, I take the risk of being in sort of a Petri dish. I'm hoping that what a Greyhound uh, states in their website is that they're you know taking going the extra mile for cleaning and sanitizing things I'm not really going to be so naive as to think that they might be doing a great job at that but I carry I you know with me wipes and whatnot so I will do what I can 
and uh, I've already taken one bus ride when I got off the Arizona Trail down to Tucson from Flagstaff and I seem to have survived that so um, fortunately the bus wasn't too crowded I'm kind of hoping maybe they've rest uh, restricted their booking so that you don't have to sit right next to someone else but uh, again I'm not counting on that so if uh, I, when I get on the bus ideally I would like to just take my pack with me and put it in the seat next to me if that's not workable then obviously it gets stored underneath and I get on the bus and look for a couple of empty seats so that's what I'll be doing and uh, crossing my fingers I basically you know whether it's riding on public transportation or going into Walmart to resupply or whatever I'm kind of doing the risk assessment mentally to um, at least reach some sort of a uh, comfortable compromise and uh, once I get there then uh, I'm uh, off doing whatever I need to do so in any event yeah <clears throat> uh, so then the, the day kind of goes on by that time it's usually mid to late morning and uh, I'm uh, hoping for weather that allows me to do exactly what I'm doing right now is sit out in the sun and just enjoy being in the forest uh, I can't say I have a great discipline for patience in terms of being any in one spot any too too long so generally two weeks after two weeks I am more than ready to make a move to do something in this case I will probably go into town to resupply and then come back out uh, into the forest again for another um, week or two whatever I need um, anyway um, yeah, the, uh, the RV works pretty well for me, although it's like a very small studio apartment. I mean, this is a fifth wheel, so, you know, and I've lived in the past in a small Mini Winnie, which was only 21 feet. It's a cab over Class C, and for me, uh, it, it had everything I needed, but at the same time, I was able to get out. I was living down in Santa Cruz, so I could go to the beach and surf and cycle and was working full-time at the time so um, being in a, a very small space uh, really worked out now since I'm full-time I do appreciate having this fifth wheel um, it's probably a little bit more than I really need but hey it is what I have so uh, it doesn't really work to um, try and change to something else that definitely uh, would involve more money anyway um, so uh yeah as days goes on i um surfing the internet and uh checking out uh the live news sites and some of the hiking facebook stuff and um just hanging out probably doing what everyone else is doing just in a different location and uh trying to figure out what's next and the answer to that is kind of fuzzy for me it's starting to get more clear because if i get out on trail i consider myself extremely safe and what i have to do is only when i go into town and whatnot is to be make it very surgical short sweet uh, very little contact blah 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 i will say that on the arizona trail over the period of a month had zero negative feedback from anyone on trail or in towns um the town stuff i sort of just guess is that they're happy to have some revenue coming in uh and uh we stayed uh, i hiked with a couple other people we did stay in motels periodically um and uh, seem to survive that and uh, otherwise we're obviously camping out uh, on trail in the bush so yeah it's uh, it worked out pretty well actually uh, we were all a little disappointed uh, not to be able to finish the Arizona trail in one shot but 
you know, when when the Grand Canyon trails, the Kaibab and Bright Angel were locked down. I mean, uh, uh, thanks anyway, but I'm not swimming across the Colorado River. And the road walk was ungodly. It's like 160 miles up through Page. So that just, um, that math just did not work out at all. <clears throat> and uh, we figured, hey, we'll just come back in the fall and call it good. So we'll see if that uh, can actually happen. Um, the issue more in front of me now is where can I hike next and I do think I have a pretty good idea <clears throat> those who know me at all probably can figure out where that's going to be because I'll be a repeat offender and um, so uh, anyway the west coast has had a fairly low below average snow year Oregon and Washington, about average. Uh, so anyway, um, we'll see how that goes. So anyway, you know, uh, toward late afternoon, I'm thinking about eating, so I'm uh, consuming uh, some sort of dinner. And basically, I'm grazing throughout the day. That's what I've been doing. That's what I do no matter where I am, on trail, off trail. It's just basically when I'm, when I'm hungry, I start eating something. And I try and keep it as nutritious as possible, especially for hiking. Um, hiking was definitely about um, calories this year and carbs, 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 carbs. That seems to fuel my engine better than anything else. And with carbs comes calories usually. So I'm not nearly as concerned with protein or fat. Um, I get some of that, uh, but um, uh, and I got to say that the cycling for four months in Tucson, my legs felt very good, very good. Upper body and total stamina, you know, would still, you know, be a challenge if depending on how much uphill I was having to do uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I was able to avoid walking and hiking through any snow, so that's a good thing. And definitely that's, uh, these days, that's my major objective for hiking is uh, keep the snow to an absolute minimum and the cold temperatures like you know down the 30s and 20s to an absolute minimum or non-existent and then it's just about uh, carrying less and resupplying more often to keep the pack weight down so that's uh, about normal um, okay well anyway um, so around, yeah, usually about eight o'clock since I've been up usually by then since four or five, uh, I'm more than ready to go to sleep. So uh, that's what I do. And uh, rinse and repeat the next day, unless I'm uh, transiting somewhere. So there you have it. The life of a full-time RVer during the pandemic. Hope that wasn't too boring. Hope there was some interest there. And uh, I'll try and put up a little more content on this channel before I switch over to the hiking one. Oh, as a little added footnote to this video, um, which uh, tends to be fairly long, I'm limited to 15 minutes. I think this is under that, but um, I, I'm not going to even go back and look at it. If there's anything grossly horrible, uh, leave me a comment. Maybe I'll uh, fix it on iMovie and uh, upload it again. Otherwise, I think it will work.